In the history of mathematics, few names shine with the intensity of Carl Theodor Wilhelm Weierstrass. Known as the father of modern analysis, he revolutionized the way we understand functions, boundaries, and continuity. More than formulas, Weierstrass bequeathed us a crystal clear view of logic and mathematical precision, a heritage that has shaped scientific thinking to this bay. Get ready to dive into a journey where genius, persistence, and a passion for knowledge intertwine to create an immortal legacy. The Greatest Mathematicians of All Time Episode 2 Carl Theodor Wilhelm Weierstrass Carl Weierstrass is best known for his construction of the theory of complex functions through power series. He was born on 31 October 1815 in Ostenfeld, Westphalia, now Germany, and died on 19 February 1897 in Berlin. Carl Weierstrass's father, Wilhelm Weierstrass, was secretary to the mayor of Ostenfeld at the time of Carl's birth. Wilhelm Weierstrass was a well-educated man with extensive knowledge of the arts and sciences. He was certainly capable of reaching higher positions than he did, and this attitude may have been one of the reasons why Carl Weierstrass's early career was in positions well below his exceptional ability. Weierstrass's mother was Theodora von der Forst, and Carl was the eldest of Theodora and Wilhelm's four children, none of whom married. Wilhelm Weierstrass became a tax inspector when Carl was eight years old. This job required him to spend only short periods anywhere, so Carl often moved from school to school as the family moved around Prussia. In 1827, Weierstrass's mother, Theodora, died, and a year later, his father, Wilhelm, remarried. In 1829, Wilhelm Weierstrass became an assistant in the main tax office of Paderborn, and Karl joined the Catholic gymnasium there. Weierstrass excelled in the gymnasium, despite having to take a part-time job as an accountant to help with the family's finances. While in high school, Weierstrass certainly attained a level of mathematical competence far beyond what would be expected. He regularly read Krell's diary and taught math classes to one of his brothers. However, Weierstrass's father wanted him to study finance, and so, after graduating from the gymnasium in 1834, he entered the University of Bonn with a course planned for him that included the study of law, finance, and economics. With a career in Prussian administration planned for him by his father, this was indeed a well-designed course. However, Weierstrass suffered from the conflict between obeying his father's wishes or studying the subject he loved, namely mathematics. The result of the conflict that took place within Weierstrass was that he did not attend either the mathematics classes or the classes of the course he had planned. He reacted to the internal conflict by pretending not to care about his studies and spent four years practicing fencing and drinking heavily. As Biermann writes, the conflict between duty and inclination led to physical and mental exhaustion. He tried, in vain, to overcome his problems by participating in a carefree student life. He studied mathematics on his own, however, reading Mechanic Celeste de Laplace and then a work of Jacobi on elliptic functions. He came to understand the methods required in the theory of elliptic functions by studying transcripts of Goodermann's lectures. In a letter to Lee, written nearly 50 years later, he explained how he came to the ultimate decision to study mathematics despite his father's wishes at this time. When I became aware of a letter from Abel to Legendre in Krell's diary during my student years, it was of utmost importance. The immediate derivation of the form of the representation of the function given by Abel from the differential equation that defines this function was the first mathematical task I set myself, and his fortunate solution made me determined to devote myself entirely to mathematics. I made this decision in my seventh semester. 
Weierstrass had made the decision to become a mathematician, but he was still expected to be on a course studying public finance and management. Following his decision, he spent another semester at the University of Bonn, his eighth semester ending in 1838, and having failed to study the subjects in which he was enrolled, he simply left the university without taking the examinations. Weierstrass's father was desperately upset with his son dropping out of school. He was persuaded by a family friend, the president of the Paderborn Courts, to allow Karl to study at the Theological and Philosophical Academy in Münster so that he could take the necessary examinations to become a secondary school teacher. On 22 May 1839, Weierstrass enrolled at the Academy in Münster. Gutermann taught at Münster, and this was the reason why Weierstrass was so eager to study there. Weierstrass attended Gutermann's lectures on elliptic functions, some of the first lectures on this topic to be given, and Gutermann strongly encouraged him in his mathematical studies. Leaving Münster in the autumn of 1839, Weierstrass studied for the teacher's examination, for which he applied in March 1840. By this time, however, Weierstrass's father had changed jobs once again, becoming director of a salt pan in January 1840, and the family now lived in Westincotten, near Lippstadt, on the river Lippe, west of Paderborn. At Weierstrass's request, he received a question about the paper he received in May 1840 on the representation of elliptic functions, and presented his own important research as an answer. Gutermann evaluated the paper and rated Weierstrass's contribution. Weierstrass began his career as a qualified professor of mathematics at the Pro Gymnasium in Deutsch Krone in West Prussia, present-day Poland, in 1842, where he remained until he moved to the Collegium Hosianum in Bronzeburg in 1848. As a mathematics teacher, he was also required to teach other topics, and Weierstrass taught physics, botany, geography, history, German, calligraphy, and even gymnastics. Weierstrass later described the endless sorrow and boredom of those miserable years in which he had no colleague for mathematical discussions nor access to a mathematical library and that the exchange of scientific letters was a luxury he could not afford. Around 1850, Weierstrass began to suffer from very severe dizziness attacks, which culminated in a violent nausea after about an hour. Frequent attacks over a period of about 12 years made his work difficult, and it is believed that these problems may have been caused by the mental conflicts he suffered as a student, along with the stress of devoting himself to mathematics in every spare minute of his time while taking on the demanding job of a teacher. It is not surprising that when Weierstrass published papers on abelian functions in the prospectus of the Bronzeburg School, they went unnoticed by mathematicians. However, in 1854, he published Zur Theorie der Aberschen Funktion in Krelle's journal, and this was certainly noticed. This paper did not present the complete theory of inversion of hyperelliptic integrals that Weierstrass had developed, but rather a preliminary description of his methods involving the representation of abelian functions as constantly converging power series. With this article, Weierstrass came out of obscurity. The University of Königsberg conferred on him an honorary doctorate on 31st March 1854. In 1855, Weierstrass applied for the chair at the University of Breslau, which was left vacant when Kummer moved to Berlin. Kummer, however, tried to influence things so that Weierstrass went to Berlin, not to Breslau, so Weierstrass was not appointed. A letter from Dirichlet to the Prussian Minister of Culture, written in 1855, strongly supported Weierstrass's appointment to a university appointment. After being promoted to senior lecturer in Brownsburg, Weierstrass obtained a year's leave to devote himself to advanced mathematical studies. However, he had already decided that he would never teach again. 
Weierstrauss published a complete version of his theory of the inversion of hyperelliptic integrals in his next paper, The Theory de Abelschen Function, in Krella's journal in 1856. There was a movement by several universities to offer him a professorship. While universities in Austria discussed the prospect, an offer of a professorship came from the Industrial Institute of Berlin, later Technical Institute. Although he preferred to go to the University of Berlin, Weierstrauss certainly did not want to return to the Collegium Hosianum in Bronsburg, so he accepted the offer of the Institute on 14th June 1856. Offers continued to be made to Weierstrauss, so that when he attended a conference in Vienna in September 1856, he was offered a professorship at any Austrian university of his choice. Before he had decided what to do with this offer, the University of Berlin offered him a professorship in October. This was the job he had wanted for a long time, and he quickly accepted. Although having accepted the offer of the Industrial Institute at the beginning of the year, he was not able to formally occupy the chair at the University of Berlin for some years. Weierstrauss's successful lectures in mathematics attracted students from all over the world. The topics of his lectures included the application of Fourier series in integrals to mathematical physics, 1856-57, an introduction to the theory of analytic functions, where he expounded results he had obtained in 1841 but never published, the theory of elliptic functions, his main research topic, and applications to problems of geometry and mechanics. In his 1859-60 lectures, Weierstrauss gave Introduction to Analysis, where he addressed the fundamentals of the subject for the first time. In 1860-61, he lectured on Integral Calculus. We have described above the health problems that Weierstrauss suffered from 1850 onwards. Although he had achieved the positions he dreamed of, his health deteriorated in December 1861 when he collapsed completely. It took him about a year to recover enough to teach again, and he never fully regained his health. From then on, he began to teach sitting while a student wrote on the blackboard for him. The attacks he had suffered since 1850 ceased and were replaced by chest problems. In his 1863-64 course on the general theory of analytic functions, Weierstrauss began to formulate his theory of real numbers. In his lectures of 1863, he proved that complex numbers are the only commutative algebraic extension of real numbers. Gauss had promised proof of this in 1831, but failed to produce it. In 1872, his emphasis on rigor led him to discover a function that, although continuous, had not derived at any point. Analysts who relied heavily on intuition for their findings were quite dismayed by this counterintuitive function. Riemann had suggested in 1861 that such a function could be found, but his example failed to be undifferentiable at all points. Weierstrauss's lectures developed into a four-semester course which he continued to teach until 1890. The four courses were Introduction to the Theory of Analytic Functions, elliptic functions, abelian functions, and calculation of variations or applications of elliptic functions. Over the years, courses developed and several versions were published, such as the Notes of Killing, made in 1868, and those of Hurwitz, of 1878. Weistross's approach still dominates the teaching of analysis today, and this is clear in the content and style of these classes, particularly in the introduction course. Its contents were numbers, the concept of function with the Weierstrass power series approach, continuity and differentiability, analytic continuation, singularity points, analytic functions of several variables, in particular Weierstrass's preparation theorem, and boundary integrals. In Berlin, Weierstrass had two colleagues, Kummer and Kronecker, and together, the three gave Berlin the reputation of being the leading university for studying mathematics. Kronecker was a close friend of Weistrass for many years, but in 1877, Kronecker's opposition to Cantor's work 
caused a rift between the two. This became so bad that at one point in 1885, Weistrass decided to leave Berlin and go to Switzerland. However, he changed his mind and remained in Berlin. A large number of students benefited from Weistrass's teachings. We name a few who are mentioned elsewhere in our archive. Bachmann, Bolsa, Cantor, Engel, Frobenius, Gegenbauer, Hensel, Holder, Hurwitz, Killing, Klein, Nisar, Konigsberger, Lurch, Lee, Lewerthoff, Mertens, Minkowski, Mitag Leffler, Neto, Schottke, Swartz, and Stolz. One student in particular, however, deserves special mention. In 1870, Sofia Kovalevskaya came to Berlin and Weistross gave her private lessons as she was not allowed to enter the university. Clearly, she was a very special student to Weistross, as he wrote to her that, I dreamed and was enchanted by so many riddles that we have yet to solve, about finite and infinite spaces, about the stability of the world system, and about all the other great problems of mathematics and physics of the future. You've been close all my life, and I have never met anyone who could bring me such an understanding of the highest aims of science in such joyful agreement with my basic intentions and principles as you do. It was through Weistross's efforts that Kovalevska received an honorary doctorate from Göttingen, and he also used his influence to help her obtain the post in Stockholm in 1883. Weistross and Kovalevskaya corresponded for 20 years between 1871 and 1940. More than 160 letters were exchanged, but Weistross burned Kovalevskaya's letters after his death. The standards of rigor that Weistross established, defining, for example, irrational numbers as limits of convergent series, strongly affected the future of mathematics. He also studied integer functions, the notion of uniform convergence, and functions defined by infinite products. Their efforts are summarized as follows. Known as the father of modern analysis, Weistrass developed tests for the convergence of series and contributed to the theory of periodic functions, real variable functions, elliptic functions, abelian functions, convergent infinite products, and the calculus of variations. He also advanced the theory of bilinear and quadratic forms. Weistrass published little because his critical sense invariably compelled him to base any analysis on a solid foundation, starting from a new approach and continually revising and expanding. However, he edited the complete works of Steiner and those of Jacobi. He decided to oversee the publication of his own complete works. In his case, this would involve a large amount of unpublished material from his lecture courses and Weisserstrass realized that without his help, this would be a difficult task. The first two volumes appeared in 1894 and 1895, being the only ones to appear before his death in 1897. His last years were difficult. During his last three years, he was confined to a wheelchair, motionless and dependent. He died of pneumonia. The remaining volumes of his collected works slowly appeared. Volume 3 in 1903, Volume 4 in 1902, Volumes 5 and 6 in 1915, and Volume 7 in 1927. The seven volumes were reprinted in 1967. More works continue to be published today, particularly versions of his lecture courses taken from the notes taken by those who attended the lectures. Weierstrass's life and work are a powerful reminder. Great breakthroughs are not born of talent alone, but of tireless dedication and love for the truth. Just as he transformed mathematics, you can also transform your world, starting with the desire to understand and explore the unknown. Now it's your turn. Share this content, inspire other curious people, and keep the flame of knowledge alive.